Yeah, yeah. Um, I think anything, anytime you have an opportunity to communicate in front of others, you want to be remembered. You want there to be a residual effect. Mm -hmm. um, you're most impressive in front of the podium, not behind it. You're hidden behind the podium. Mm -hmm. You're most impressive with folks hearing your voice in a direct fashion with their ears. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in a large hall or a large room, um, lower the vo uh, raise the volume and, and uh, lose the microphone. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in direct eye contact, mm -hmm. trying to connect to each part of the room, preferably with what you've learned about the room and the players in the room mm -hmm. and or what you know about the people in the group you're talking to. But create an impression that's going to linger. Um, I know my impressions linger because I get emails or calls or people come up to me and tell me that certain things that they hung on in my presentation um, had a residual effect with them. The other thing I say is I really believe that when you're pu doing public speaking, there are two effects. There's the placency effect and the recency effect. Mm -hmm. The placency effect is the first impression you'll make. Mm -hmm. And folks may hang on that and not hear another word that you said. Or the recency effect of what you closed with and the last thing that you said. Mm -hmm. Well, if you know these two effects are at play anytime you're speaking, always be ready to start strong and finish strong no matter where the content takes you in the middle. Mm -hmm. I've had occasions where I really connected with groups. Um, you know, I, th I think I'd answer that question by saying changing others is about their choice. Mm -hmm. And I think when you speak, you have to give people permission to choose to change. Mm -hmm. um, and you can bring all the attributes of life to that um, endeavor. Um, so I try and be genuine to myself, mm -hmm. and if you're moved by it, great, and if you're not, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and like a, like, a, like a coach or like a team, I win seven or eight games out of ten. Mm -hmm. I'm over 500. I feel really good about my batting average. But I don't hit home runs every time I step up to the plate. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I recently gave a presentation where I thought I'd done very well. But it was between three and five at the end of three days. Mm -hmm. The folks listening were tired and, and I was told what a great job I did. But I received no feedback from any of the individuals in that room. Mm -hmm. And then number two, I was talking to a colleague who I was actually replacing on the docket to do that speaking. And he was saying that there were some folks that didn't really understand why I was giving the presentation I was giving or where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. And um, it dawned on me uh, that it may have been the, the right speech at the wrong place. Mm -hmm. It may have been the wrong speech at the right place. <laughs> It may have been the wrong speech at the wrong place, um, but I know it wasn't the right speech at the right place. And I guess what I would say is, like any endeavor, if you know from the outset you're not going to win all the ball games, you're not going to hit the ball every time you swing, you're not going to connect with everybody or connect every time you speak. What you do, I think, is you um, get organized, you lay a plan, you do your best, and you always analyze yourself and target yourself for improvement and tweak what it is you're going to do next time. Um, you know, if, if no one seemed attentive and you couldn't get any reflection of emotion from the folks you're speaking to, elevate your humor. Uh, if your timing was off and they laughed a lot at the end and didn't laugh much at the beginning, you know, Ask yourself what you said or did at the end, and would it be better moved up to the front of your presentation? Um, but 
Yeah, I, I think there are several things you can do, and I, I guess my only advice to students is be true to yourself.